It's me. I finally back. Oh my god, you guys. So my phone. I'm gonna show y'all what my phone look like. This is why I haven't been recording because I do use my phone. I'm one of those people, and so this is what my old phone looks like. This is the S4. I haven't had an upgrade since then, and so I finally got the S7. If you follow me on Instagram or Facebook, you probably know I got it, and I'm really super excited about it. So, uh, let's catch up. Alright, I'm on my way to my new job. I had to get a PPD the other day, and if y'all know what that is, that's a tuberculosis test to make sure you don't have TB, and it was done on my forearm, and there is no sign of anything, so that mean I haven't been exposed to tuberculosis. That's always great. But anyway, I want to show y'all my garden real quick before we get on the road. I can't see how to turn the camera around. So, <laughs> we're in my front yard. This is where the garden is. If you want to know why we're in the front yard instead of where we were, which is over here, you shall see. So, as you can see, there's shade over here, and that's why I have the collard greens over here. Um, you know, any type of leafy green, they don't like the sun too much. Everything else that's in the front getting full, full on as much exposure is the tomatoes. Now, the tomatoes look sad right now because I replanted them. Things are dying from the spring and like a few months ago. Um, so that's what's going on and we haven't had any rain and it's really, really hot out here. So I put them in kiddie pools. As you can see, everything is in kiddie pools. Everything is in kiddie pools around the house because I don't have a water, um, a rain gutter. What is it? Yeah, I don't have rain gutters. So I lined it up around the house where the water would fall if it was raining. And so that's where they are. And the kiddie pools will help keep, um, will help catch the water and then the plants can't absorb the water from the pool um, if I don't get out here and water them fast enough. This was an experiment. It does work actually just planting dirt into the um, kiddie pools. I don't know which one worked better. I haven't really determined that or not, but we'll get to that. I'll let you know, I guess, now that I'm doing it both ways because I wasn't really doing it this way. I just had a few plants, kind of like how this setup right here is. And I was gonna go more to this, but this uses up way more soil than this does. So we're gonna probably stick with this method. But as you can see, I replanted a lot of stuff, you guys. So it's really looking sad. My son, Orange Tree, is on the verge of dying. It's so hot out here. Like I need to really water them. So what I did, if you can look at some of these, you see that wine bottle has water in it, and that one has water in it. I've already come out here and watered them. I'm gonna come out here again and water them this evening. That one has a wine bottle in it. I got another wine bottle in the house that I'll probably um, put out here. There's one in that one. I'm gonna put the, the one in the house in there. So um, just to show you what I have going on real quick, this is some, this will be some um, green peppers. I had some seeds from a plant, from a pepper plant that I just in the seeding. And so I threw them in there. I need to put a label or something on it so I know what it is but yeah I had planted um, some peppers and I got a pepper and so once I got the pepper and I used all of it up I took the seed and I put the seed in there or some of the seed but anyways everything looks real sad I probably shouldn't have recorded this time of day those are water stuff they don't have holes in them yet but they will I'm gonna come back out here later on it's just too hot I need to be out here right now um, but yeah, I just wanted you guys to see. Oh, one thing I really did want, the only, the biggest reason for me to show you guys this, was this plant right here. These two tomato plants, I propagated, um, both of them from two different, um, plants. I don't remember what this one is. I got a question mark on the little stick in there. And then that one is a celebrity. That one right there is. But yeah, so how you propagate is, like this, well, let me see if I can show you over here. Oh yeah, let's go over here and look at the really big tomato plant. And I'll show you what propagation means, or not so much what it means, but how to do it. Okay, so you see how there's a V. Let's see, I can't see what I'm doing. You see how there's a V um, right here? 
this one right here, that piece, that straight one, that's the one that I would cut and then I would plant it in the dirt. So you have your V and then the piece that grows out of your V, that's the, the part you would, you would cut. And so this would be a really, really good one right here because um, it has a lot of foliage on it. It's already nice and green and healthy, so it would do good. But that's what it is um, when people propagate, even right here. Like, you see how this little one is? I wouldn't cut this one yet. I'm going to let that one do its thing a little bit more. But once it gets ready, I'm going to cut that off. I'm going to stick it in the dirt, and it's going to grow. Grow me another tomato plant. Um, let's see what... This one doesn't look too good. It looks like it's, I don't know if it's dying or if it's just thirsty. But, hopefully it hurts, but I was trying to see if I had like one really good one, but I'm not going to mess with them too much because I just, I'm going to mess with them too much because I just planted them. And um, it's hot and I don't want to bother with it right now, so. We're on our way to, um, or I'm on my way to get my PTV red, like I said, and I'm going to pick up my phone. It is hot, you guys. My goodness. It is so hot out here. Hey there, you guys. It's like, like it was um, a little deformed. I thought it almost, when I looked at it, I was like, it almost looks like a little heart. Let's focus in on that thing. You see it? Like a lopsided heart. <laughs> or I don't know. It looks like something, but all three of these tomatoes. Stuck on that one little stem piece right there, but these two are like they were gonna be either two separate ones or yeah, I think that's or one yeah, basically try to split. I'm not sure, but yeah, I thought it was pretty cool because you would never see this in the store. They wouldn't sell that. They would think too many people would think something's wrong with it. I'm going to eat it because it was in my garden, so I know that's going to be in my garden. I wanted to show you that. Stop. It's Nikki Alpha. What's up, my people? I'm like super sweaty right now. It's so hot outside, you guys. My gosh. Anyways, I'm on my way to, um, I got a new job. Yay! I passed my CST exam, yay! And so, um, I did need my certification for this job, which was great, but I have it. So if I do, um, you know, want to take a better job to excel, I can now. Um, I'm also working on my other one, which I've been working, we're not gonna talk about that right now. We're gonna get into the, the CST one. And so, um, I'm really excited, you guys. I was so concerned with that exam, like, oh my goodness. I just didn't know how it was really gonna go because you can study and study and then you can not study what you're supposed to study. And that's basically what I did. But luckily, the stuff that I did study, even though it wasn't on the exam, I guess the information that, came, that I got from studying helped because even though it wasn't like the same questions, when you read in the questions and you um, read in the explanation to like the answers, then you start like, like you end up learning. And so that was really how I passed the exam. I had a lot of study material. I got two CS, two two um, apps, one from CST and one from AST. Then I got the study guide from Mormon Trinity however you say that name um i got a study guide from them too now it was some stuff in there that you know helped from all of them I, i'm gonna say that so studying did help i, I won't I, that, that that's obvious studying definitely helped but you need to know the sequence of events like that's like a big thing you need to know how to be a surgical tech like you really need to know how to be a, uh, how to be a surgical tech so i got a 129 out of a 175 and i went to school and two, i graduated in 2006. i took the test last year for the first time and i didn't pass it but i also didn't study it last year i got 100 112 i think was the score that i got last year 
and you need a 118. And so the test is 200 questions. It's really long and it really, it wasn't a bad test. It just was uncomfortable because I hadn't studied the stuff that was on the test. Like I say, I knew the answers, but I didn't know it because I read that answer or that question. I knew it because of the explanation to the questions that I either got, probably the ones that I got wrong. Like when I would get the, the questions wrong on the exam or the practice test. Oh, I did take the two practice tests too, you guys, that they have um, on the CST website for the, like the A and B practice exam. I purchased both of those. They like $40 a piece. And what I figured out was that they're the same exact questions that are on the app. So if you're gonna buy the app, just study the app because the tech, the exam that they give you on the, the website, the two, I think they're 175 a piece. And the app is 40, uh, 40, 300. My camera's pretty good. My, um, the, the, the app gives you 300 questions. So that's the 300 right there, but I didn't know that until after I hadn't already paid it and it was just like, well, you know, thanks you guys for that. But anyways, I felt good after I took the test because I it, it let me know where I was at as far as test to go but I had already saw those questions before but it did say like it'll tell you whether or not you're ready for the test so I think how they do it is they give you these questions and they give you the explanation to the questions so that when you do go take the test even though you haven't seen that question before you know what the answer is based off of the explanation like every time I would get one wrong I would read the explanation write the explanation down and try to process why that was the explanation for it. Like if it was an anatomy question and I didn't understand what the structure was they were referring to, I would just go and um, Google that anatomy structure or organ, whatever, you know, landmark, whatever it is you're trying to visualize, you need to visualize it however you can. And so a lot of it for me was easy because I could see some of the stuff that I had already done. But if you don't, haven't worked in the field or you haven't had a lot of experience taking, you know, as a surgical test, before you take the test, you need to really kind of be able to see what um, what it is that they're talking about because then that made sense. But um, yeah, it was um, it was a really good, it was a good thing that I passed it, you guys, because I was in that stress and like, I wanted to just get up in the middle of that exam and just be like, the hell with this because I didn't study any of this. I don't really, I felt good. So, I was just telling you guys, my phone, my, somebody just called in the middle of me. I should have put the phone on airplane mode. But yeah, so anyways, I, I'm so glad that I passed it though, you guys. Like I was saying, it's just such an accomplishment and it, it just helps me or it makes me feel like I'm one step closer to my to my goal. But yeah, so um, the the biggest thing that I would tell you that I noticed that was on the exam, it was a lot of ortho. Maybe not like a lot of ortho, but it was ortho on there. It was, oh, you need to know lap, um, any type of lap or laparoscopic um, cases. Now, I won't say any type, but you definitely need to know a lap athy and a um, lap coli. You need to know um, your retractors. Not so much all of them, but at least the basics and their purpose, like their purposes. Um, you need to know some surgical tech pharmacology, which was like conversions. So, in the book that I, my study guide, the one from Mormon Trace, it did have this pharmacology stuff in there, but it didn't have it for like converting from CCs to liters, which I know, you know, that might be easy for some of us to know, but for the ones that haven't worked in the field, like you wouldn't know that unless, you wouldn't know what the answer was unless you had done it before or you already knew what the conversion, like what the conversion rate is. So that was one thing um, that I noticed a lot of. It was just really being able to read the questions, understand what each thing was. Oh, you definitely need to know your positioning. You definitely need to know like um, lithotomy. What's, you know, why would lithotomy be a good position for um, certain case surgical procedures and why would supine and 
prone, you know, jackknife. You need to know what what those positions are because even if the question isn't asking you what jackknife is, if you can eliminate um, a jackknife position, like if the question is asking you, oh, the patient is coming in for an abdominal hysterectomy and you see jackknife and you see lateral and then you see lithotomy and then you see prone, if you already know jackknife, that don't make any sense. Why would you have a person butt in the air for an abdominal hysterectomy? Or if it said prone, or not prone, but lateral, why would you have a patient land on their side to do an abdominal um, procedure? But also, too, prone makes sense. So then you think in your head, well, why wouldn't prone work? And then you think in your head, well, why would lithotomy work? Well, lithotomy works because it will help. You can manipulate, you know, the... Um, the vagina area if you need to do like a, a vaginal assist of um a vaginal assisted abdominal hysterectomy so you, it is you just need to know why you're doing what you're doing and why you would position the person in the way that you would like you just need to know what you're doing basically and so you need to understand what positioning is a lot of the test was basic surgical test stuff but because it's technical or it's it's an exam, so they're detailed. Like, they want you to, to walk them step by step through the process. And you need to be able to do that and understand what you're doing to get the answer correct. But anyways, um, I had a, a couple people keep asking me, like, questions, especially on Instagram, about um, the pay. Let me tell you guys, the pay is going to differ for different people. If you're in the middle of nowhere, you're not going to make as much as people in certain places and if you're in California you're not gonna make as much because you gotta think people in California are gonna you they say they make twenty five thirty dollars an hour but cost of living is through the roof you know in San Diego and LA and all those type of places. So for Florida what I've noticed um and, and with, from my experience I've seen twenty plus without a certification. Now my experience is uh, military so that may play a part in it but 20 plus without the certification now that I have it you know I'm should be, I should be like over the 25 like it, well over 22 in that range like over that so for me that's that's fine because I like what I've not learned now that I might not have known um, a few months ago like a couple years ago when I came back into the field was that surgery centers is definitely the way that I'm going, you guys. Like, you're gonna get treated better at them. Um, not all hospitals are bad, especially like if you, you know, got a good team or whatever, but surgery centers are smaller. They um, have better hours. <laughs> they have the doctors, you know, talk, it's, it's different. It's a different, different atmosphere and they pay you better from what I can see. Um, so yeah, that I don't see myself going back into a hospital except for that it's only one house well it's two hospitals here that I will work at and only because of the experience that it will offer me. Um, and that's the Mayo Clinic and Jack uh, Shans or University of Florida. And like I said, both of those are like really nice prestigious hospitals here in Jacksonville and they're training. They're tra I wanna say university is or Shan U F however you wanna say it, it's like a prestigious but because it's a training facility and it has so much um, technology, like you can't not want to work there because that was crazy. Oh my goodness, their garden is gorgeous. Oh, that was community part. Anyways, so I um I just think that for me, the surgery centers are gonna be the way to go. Like I say, they just. It just seems uh, like a, a much nicer atmosphere. I think I'll get um, where I'm trying to go in my career a little bit better. Maybe not faster, but at least maybe a little happier um, than I would if I was in a hospital. A hospital is almost like you're on an assembly line. Oh, I need a pass. It's like you're on an assembly line and you're just, you know, like a number. Like they don't care if you come, they care if you don't come to work because they're gonna fire you behind if you don't come, but they don't really care, like, I don't know how to explain it. Like, they're not really caring about, I ain't gonna say they don't care about your family, cause that's, it's just not the same type of environment. It's just a lot different. And so, if I gotta go to somebody's job, I wanna at least feel like
they, they appreciate me being there and they understand that, you know, I don't have to be there. Not, not to say that, oh, I ain't got to work at your job with an attitude, but you know, people got options and everybody don't want to work for people that they don't like. And that's just, that's just what it is. You know, you need to have a happy working environment. So anyways, you guys, that's all I really had for you. I was just coming to give you a review on the exam, give you a quick update on what I had going on. And I will hit you guys up later to let you know how the job goes tomorrow. Tomorrow's my first day. It's an early start day. It's a six o'clock start day. That's what that was. Six o'clock. <laughs> but I'll be all right. So, anyways, um, if if y'all have any more questions, just ask me. I'm gonna try to make more videos. I just had to take a step back and get some things together and just try to figure out a path that I was gonna that I was gonna be happy with in my life. So um, I'm on that path now and. I'm more than willing to answer any questions that you guys have as far as, like I said, surgical tech goes, or if you are a gardener or whatever, if you're on YouTube just watching my videos, if you just want to know anything, just ask me. I don't really care what the topic is. So, um, yeah, you guys, I'll catch y'all um, on the next video. Bye.